taking a little break from my regular um, coloring that I was doing to pop in and show you this. This is in Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson, and um, her books have very nice paper, easy to color pages. There's the ISBN number, and today we're going to be working on this one. All right, so you can see I've already done a lot of the background, and I started doing these flowers, and I thought, wait a minute, those are so easy and so fun, I've got to do a video. So I did pull out just my Prisma colors for this. I am not mixing any other pencils, and I pulled... 928 which is blush pink so there's that one then i went straight over to vermilion uh pale vermilion which is 921 yeah the numbers are getting kind of messed up there i'm there you can see it i'm gonna have to just go ahead and make little labels and put them on and then this is I have such a glare. Okay, I've got to see what this is. This is Crimson Red 924. Yeah, I'm going to have to make some labels. But anyway, there's that. Okay, so I've already done the fold over parts on these flowers. I came in with the lightest shade. I did the middles, the centers, of all these okay then I came in with the second color that pale vermilion and came in just on the edges okay did that everywhere came back in with my first pencil and blended everything okay now this is where you just start looking at what's in front and what's behind I want to make sure we have time for this one. So let's just start up here. Okay. The petal that's in the very front would be this one. Why this one instead of this one? Do you see how that line comes over slightly in front of this one? It means this one's in front. Now, anywhere that it bubbles out like this, that means the front is going to be a little bit lighter and the back a little bit darker okay so we come through here this is raised and then here and here and if you'll take the time to do this with your pictures then you're going to get some movement does that make sense at all it's just going to give you a little bit of movement so I'm coming in with that first color. I'm doing all that. Okay. Then I'm going to come in on this side. Same thing. It's going to be lighter in front. And all the way up to this edge. Lighter in front. Go all the way out to here. And normally you would do your lighter coloring first so that if you get into this, you don't smear the blue. I may have some smearing going on when I get up there. I'll just have to see. I may have to come back and just do some erasing first. All right, and these back ones, do you see how this goes? This line right here is going straight and then it intersects or it runs into that one. Whereas here, it curves all the way around. Because this runs into it and doesn't make that perfect curve, that tells me this one's on top. If you get to a point where you can't tell, and I'm just gonna go over those dots because all these dots, I'm gonna come back and do with probably a yellow paint marker, um, a posh pen, so that they look like they're little fireflies or glow bugs or something in the night. 
Okay, if you get to where you can't tell which one's on top, you know, if this had been more curved, then guess. It's not going to matter. As long as you do one side of the line light and the other side darker, it's going to make one look like it's on top of the other. Okay, just get all through here. Yeah, sometimes I go around these and sometimes I just go over them. I need to just go over them because it doesn't matter in this picture. There we go. So that's the lighter color. Now I'm moving to my second color, which was, oh, that first one. Did I say it was pale vermilion? It was blush pink. Sorry, that's why you need to watch the video all the way through once if you're coloring along. <laughs> then the pale vermilion. You probably caught that though. You knew that wasn't that dark. So then I'm gonna go into this one and now I'm going to go next to everything that was done first. Okay, so like there's a ripple here. So to make this look like it's pushed up, I'm going to have to go dark next to it. I'm going to have to go darker next to this. And next to this one. I'm going to go a little bit darker right behind here. That's what's going to make that look like it's actually flipped over. Now, let's still just look at just this one. I'm going to go to my darker color, my crimson red. I'm going to come in here right behind that line. I'm going to use some of that crimson. And then way down here in the bottom, down in the deep, deep depths. Do it sparingly because these are lighter colored flowers. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do on that part. I'm going to come back with my lightest shade and I am going to start blending this. Now these blend so well because they are the Prismacolors. Okay, Prismacolored pencils are um, very waxy and blend nicely. If you have polychromos, they're an oil base and they blend nicely. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to spend the big bucks and get nice, nice pencils to get a good blend. I have done many a video using Crayola pencils and gotten some really nice blends. You'll have to work a little harder at it with Crayola, but that's a budget for some people. And to be honest with you, I still enjoy dragging out my Crayola and using them. Okay, so there's one petal. I'm gonna trade back over to my Pale Vermilion. I'm gonna start on this side. So if we're following what I did here, I am going to go under where that flip is, under where this flip is, and I'm still leaving room to come back and put just a smidge, yes, that's a word, of that, um, that crimson red in there. And then I go down here where it's all tucked down in because I want that to look like it's further down in there. Okay, then I'm going to come in with my crimson. So whatever pencils and whatever colors, it's the same technique. Okay, you're still going to look for those lines that tell you and those ripples that tell you where you put your darks and where you put your lights. And then my lightest shade and come on back in and start blending. Now notice how I'm going this direction. I'm going the direction 
the petal is going. See, like this is going around. This is going up and down into the base. If I took this and just went all over, this red might drag over to here. And I want to keep it right there in that area. So when you're working with pencils that have more wax or more oil base to them than Crayola, say, be careful which direction you're going because you very well could drag color across your piece from one place to another that you really didn't want it to go. Okay. So now then, um, yes, I am still working on the bird pictures. I am trying to give folks just a little bit of time to still get requests in. I'm back to that pale vermilion again, going under the edge. Now, when I do this part, I'm going to come up right next to these little what are those stamen? Right next to them, because the only dark area in these is going to be down at the base. And let's just go ahead and do this side too. Do all this. Up. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it here. Let's do there. All right. So this, because this one is behind this one, the petal. And let's get these going across. And I will use, like I said, a posh pen on these just to um, get all the dots done. And if you missed that video, it was just, just very few videos back. I explained about a posh pen and how you can use it to add just little bits to your pictures and really, really put a lot of um, extra oomph, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. But it just gives a little bit of extra detail, a little bit of interest, maybe, to the page. All right. Now I'm going in with that red, and I'm looking here to see if this is sticking out somewhere and it's not, so I know that's just a, a background piece. This could be a background piece, but I'm going to say that it's hiding, the tip of it's hiding behind this one. This goes up here, this is over here, so that's all the ones that are hiding. just get that little bit of color in there just to help push it back and under. Okay, taking out my lighter shade again and I'm going to blend. Again, go the direction that you're wanting that color to go. Don't just take off and pull that color across that flower and be like, oh no! Because trust me, it happens. Oh, I only speak from experience on that. I have done it. And a lot of your pencils will stain your paper. And once you've drugged that color across, you can't really erase it. You can try and you can get some of it out. You can get a lot of it out. And sometimes what I've done is just come back with a darker color and just change the whole color scheme and gone over it with some other color since I couldn't get it erased. So just be careful. You can do it. Don't get in a hurry. Not in a race. It'll get finished when it gets finished. Okay, so there's that one now. And anything that you want to deepen up, 
Well, it doesn't look as good in the camera as it does in person. It looks really good in person. So, but anything that you want to freshen, you can come back in and just add more color. Another reason I use the lightest shade to do my blending is so that I'm not losing that color. I'm just adding more to it. I'm not just moving around what's already on the page. Maybe that helped a little because I did still have a little bit of white in there. I think I need to do a video very soon about the tooth of paper. I think I mentioned that once before, but I never did quite get to it. Okay, let's look at this one. Here's in front, and then the side. This is the top. And I have to look at this and I think, is it rolled that way or rolled that way? I think it's actually rolled that way, so this will be darker and this side will be lighter. And this one's on top, so the dark will be right next to it. Yeah, this first layer I'm not usually super careful with because I know I'm going to come back to that color again in a bit. I'm going to come up here just the top, just the top bit. Same thing here. And you know what? I did that in red because I thought it was a rolled over piece. It's actually one of those dots. So, um... I'm going to go ahead. This is an eraser that I got in an art store. Um, I think you can get it at Hobby Lobby. You used to be able to. But it will lift that color pretty good. And I just need it to lift enough that my yellow can go over it and it not look orange. So... And I don't have my blue pencils in here, so I'll fix that later. But I wanted to get enough of that lifted that I remembered. Because a lot of times I'll forget if I don't do it when I'm thinking about it. Okay, the ripple. So if this is rolled that way, because see how it comes all the way up and connects here? It doesn't stop right here. So that's why I'm saying it's going that way. So I'll do this. And then I'm going to get some back in here. I'm going to do some behind here. Let's see. This one's on top, so this gets some color. And then it's rippled there. And then this one, that's rolled this way, so behind. And it really just takes doing a few flower pages. And if you'll do a few, you'll get it down real quick on what goes where. And you won't have to think about it quite as much. Your first page or two, you're going to have to think about it a little bit more. My brain just sees it. It's just the way my brain works. I just see what's in back. Um, I, it's, it's just never been a problem for me. But there's other things that are. So you have that. But yeah. So just, just practice. Talk yourself through it. Say, okay, this is behind. This is behind. This curls there. This is behind. This is underneath. This is behind. Talk yourself through it. There you go. Darker on those edges. Then in with my first color and let's do some blending. I need to put some dark down in there. 
so that it really looks like it's tucked down in there. Okay, here we go, back to the lighter. That was my middle shade that I used for that. Just blend this away. Blend, blend. you have a favorite book and you've got a page in it that you're just like I do not even know what to do don't know where to start don't know how to attack this page just totally in the dark over it um, tell me the name of the book and if I've got it we'll see if we can figure out which page it is you can tell me describe it to me count how many pages in it is I'll do a video ask you if it's that page or not we'll go back and forth until we figure it out and help you get that done that is if I have the book if I don't then um, unless somebody gifts it to me I don't know what I'll be able to do but I do have a few books and I'm not opposed to getting a new book or two okay so there's that so let's zoom back out. And if you're looking at that page, I believe part of that was done in a video. So just go back to my main channel and do a search for it under this book's title. So there we go. And this is two different blues here and then two different blues here. And the greens, there's four different greens. And then these flowers are just this. And then I think the mushrooms, I'm not sure yet what color I'm going to do. If you have this book, that line is not there, that line. So I actually drew that in with just a black pen. Just drew in a land. That way I could make this all sitting instead of looking like it's just floating in space. All right. Well, that's really all there is to this. Um, let's see. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these just yet. I think they may be the same colors as this, these. Should I just decide? Okay, we'll just decide that they are. So what I'm going to do then is whatever this color is will probably be gel pen. And I will probably do this the same. And then those lines in gel pen. Okay, these are some sort of pods, but you know what? We're going to pretend that they're flowers that just have not opened up yet, that they're some sort of buds. We'll just pretend that. Okay, so that was my first shade. Then my second one. I'm going to go darker up in here, up in these V's, lighter as I come down, I want that just to blend out, can you tell what I'm doing there? If my hand is the paper, I'm hitting the paper and then lifting, hit and lift. And that gets a lighter and lighter touch of the paper as I move across. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with the red that we're using and do this very bottom bit. See how that just really deepened that and tucked it down in there? Blend that out. Tuck that down in there. Give it some depth. I could even do just a little bit up here. Just in those little V spots. I don't want much. Then my lightest shade. And let's go again. Get these blended. 
get the tooth worked out of that paper. There we go. Okay, so really, that's it then. Thank y'all for stopping by. If you're not a follower, I hope you will. Um, I think there's a little bell or something that'll that you can um, click that'll send you emails or something. I don't know. I don't keep up with all that. I just do the videos. But I do appreciate you stopping by. If you have questions, comments, post them down below. I try to get to all of them. I really do. Appreciate my viewers. Thank you again, and I will see you back in a few days. Bye.